In Palmerston North, Mark Killsby is pretty much a fixture on the local amateur and community theatre scene. Over a period of more than 30 years, he's performed in just about every genre of play. He's done musicals, he's done cameos in films, he's played Manuel in corporate entertainment 40 Towers evenings, and he's done plenty of straight theatre. He's currently playing Virgis in Manawatu Summer Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing, and he's mentored young people in theatre craft and drama for some years. He seemed the ideal person to talk to about the appeal of amateur and community theatre. Our conversation ranged over a number of topics. We started by talking about how and when Mark got involved in the theatre, the things he likes about it, and the things he doesn't. Um, I started doing an acute show um, as a young kid, speech and drama as it's now called, and uh, then did school plays, Sunday school plays, um, and then I, I'm, I'm a chronic asthmatic and my asthma worsened and so I suppose I didn't become involved in real stagecraft theatre until I was about in my thirties and that was in Waiuru. My mum used to belong to the Country Women's Institute and the Country Women's Institute used to do plays and my mum was a widow so I had to hear mum's lines and it always fascinated me and she took me to theatre, to the, um, all of the plays that were on in Palmerston North. I saw Shakespearean plays when I was about seven and was absolutely fascinated. Yeah. I've really lost count, but it must be about 109, 110. Okay, <laughs> what keeps me involved? Um, I, I like the team concept, I like working with other people as part of a group that's producing something together. I think that's important for us all as people to keep involved with other people. I also like the fact that um, now I am sort of to have an elder statesman sort of role somehow <laughs> that I, I've acquired because of these 110 shows. But I like the fact that it's something I can do alongside the youngest person in the cast. What don't I like? Learning lines. <laughs> learning learning lines. I, I like coming to grips with the lines, but the sheer fact of committing them to memory I do find difficult. And, and I always have. Um, it's, not, it's something that has never come easily to me. I'm envious of these people who can read the script about three times and know it. I hate them. <laughs> We asked about his most rewarding experience in theatre, the things he wished he'd done, those he'd still like to do. I think my most favourite experience was uh, doing a play called Gulls in Wanganui. Um, Gulls is written, was written by an Australian playwright and it's about a 40-something um, year old man who's been brain damaged as a result of a car accident. Um, but he finds a certain affinity with seagulls. He lives on the coast and he sees the seagulls as free spirits able to soar. Um, for the purposes of the play, Billy speaks his mind, his thoughts to the audience, but doesn't communicate by grunts with the other people on the stage. A fascinating play. Um, I spent time with IHC people in Monganui and one of the guys at the IHC used to spend a lot of time down at the wharves. So there was a, a connection there. The play is one of those that begins almost at the end and Billy tells the audiences at the end when Arthur's going to commit suicide, he's going to cut his stuff from ear to ear. Um, and at the end of the play he breaks a bottle of beer for hostages. Right. And then the lights fade. The, performance would finish with an absolute silence um, that you could feel that the audience had written that play and were emotionally involved. It was, was, was the most stunning feeling and then, then sustained applause. It, it was just amazing. It made a huge connection with the people of Wanganui and I would have to say that was an absolute delight to do. I mean, it was constantly there were letters
listens to the editor, church and, um, bulletins had it in there, um, telling people that they should go and see it. It was, you know, it was an amazing experience, and that's a role that I really treasure. I've always wanted to do the narrator in the Rocky Horror Show. <laughs> And when a certain news read got cast in the role in Palmerston North, and my, um, they used his name, and he, he just was totally uncomfortable in the role. I felt aggrieved. I'd like to do King Lear, but I don't know whether I could learn the lines. <laughs> While we were talking about roles, we asked Mark what he thought constituted a good part. What is the old saying? There's, there's no small parts, there's only small actors. And, and it, that is very, very true. Certainly some people have a larger, larger role word-wise, but we've all seen cameo roles where somebody comes along and, and appears two or three times and, and steals the show. We asked him if he thought there was a drama type how people involved in the theatre were perceived? Mm, that's an interesting question, Joy. Um, because there is a public perception that people who go on stage are people who are out there and, um, yeah, like showing off in front of other people, like performing in front of other people. I find this, this isn't exactly correct. I... I myself am not um, not the most outgoing person, although people tell me that I am. So often what we perceive of ourselves is not what other people perceive of ourselves. Um, yeah. We also asked about the crew, the people in the theatre that the audience don't see, and asked how the cast and the crew got along. That, that's, that's interesting, Joy, because um, I find there is a difference, like if you do... a a major musical that's in, you know got 40 or 50 people on stage and a crew of about 50 that it becomes not exactly a them and an us but it is almost two separate groups and I find that I'm yeah I find that hard to deal with because I I know that one can't do without the other and, you know, and if you're going to appear on stage you have to be lit it's no good appearing on a, on a dark stage and nobody can see you. So, and that goes back to why I get involved in theatres because I like that, that connection thing and that sense of community and that sense of, of all together producing something hopefully good. <laughs> it isn't always, but it has a purpose. Um, whereas in a smaller show that might say, have a, you know, eight, ten people on stage and six people backstage, that tends to develop a greater sense of community where, where they're all part of the one team. And that, that I much prefer. We asked Mark, in that role as elder statesman, if he had any advice for somebody just starting out. Be on time for rehearsals. <laughs> um, ten minutes late is not good, and if you are late, you need to apologise. Um, again, as I say, you know, my, I, I keep going back to this, but a sense that they are not the star, they are part of a team, and that they should be encouraged to to think of that team spirit that it's a group of people. Finally, we asked Mark to sum up what somebody would get out of being involved with community theatre. Uh, a sense of achievement, um, a sense of involvement, um, a sense of being part of telling 